Hello, Pasangala, Vanakam and welcome. This is your master teacher Niveta making bio learning very, very simplified just for all of you guys. So, in the grammar session, we have a lot board exam. Okay, so you need a lot of practice. So, Vedanta has come up with all India CBSE practice test that too at a free of cost. So, if you attend the test, go check out the description. There is a link, okay, and go get yourself registered and attend all the tests for free because practice makes man perfect. That's why we have a lot of So, in all sessions, in the channel, in all teachers, in all sessions, in PDF, go get those PDF from the link that is given in the description below. In this chapter, we have a lot of chapter, Evolution. Especially from board exam point of view, this is a very, very important chapter. Evolution, na enna pasangla. So, an organism is evolved. Evolution, na, there is a constant improvement. There is a constant development. Other than our evolution in Solro. You can see human being millions of years ago, he was very, very nomadic, okay. He was not so civilized. His brain was not as much as sharp as it is today, correct? So, human today, this man can control the entire world because he has so much evolved that is happening here okay so in the session line up theories of origin of life evidences for evolution and important questions from this session is all we are going to study from today's session so modala evolution it's the branch of science that deals with the study of origin of life okay and evolution of life it is basically a very important term we call it as evolutionary biology or bioevolution which was coined by a person called Mayer. The word evolution means to unfold or unroll or to reveal the hidden uh, potentialities. Okay. Evolution seems simply means an orderly change from one condition to another condition correct so 10 varshathukku munadi nama life vera mari irukku ipo 10 varshathukku appra nama life vera mari irukku inno 20 years kalichi nama life inno super ah irukku that is what we call it as evolution evolution is a slow but continuous process which never stops so ninga kekla man ipo yo man and evolve aite irukkaangala aama pasangala so in the next 100 years 200 years or 300 years you can see a human being who's more powerful who is more superior than today's man. Okay. So, that is what we call it as evolution. Pasangla. And there are different theories of origin of life. Correct. How in the life and the originate? That is our origin of life. And so, so, life existed on earth 4.5 billion years ago. So, okay. earth is 4.5 billion years ago. Da. So, 4.5 billion years ago, the life existed on earth. And these are all stories. These are all theories. Okay. We don't know what really would have happened. Okay. So, the, what are the different theories? I have Big Bang Theory, Theory of Special Creation, Theory of Eternity and Cosmozoic Theory. Idalana sila theories that is going to explain your origin of life pasangla. So, vanga in a NNN can clear up akla. So, on the photo yare Charles Darwin. He is the father of evolution, okay. He was the one who proposed the theory of natural selection, which is the most widely accepted theory, correct? So, what is theory in pasangla? Big Bang Theory, okay. So, what is this Big Bang Theory, okay? Once upon a time, so many million years ago, there was a huge explosion of gases in the universe, okay. And though all those gases started cooling down and they started forming planets, solar system and many other aspects of your universe universe okay then one such very very small portion of that particular universe was your solar system with sun in that we just have a very small portion that is earth we are just we are just a dot in this big universe okay this theory was proposed by Abe. According to this theory, the universe originated 20 billion years ago due to a thermonuclear explosion of a dense entity. The thermonuclear explosion of our big bang and so on. Okay, 4.5 billion years ago, the origin of the solar system took place by the gaseous clouds 
form due to this explosion and these gaseous cloud collapse and converted into flat disk like structure made up of atoms and small particles due to their own gravitational pull so in the disk like structures they started forming your planet started forming why because of your gravitational force that force played a very very vital role in this big bang theory patanga okay this flat disk like structure is called solar nebula they the very central part of the solar nebula became still hotter and it got converted into the sun so in the solar nebula la nadula iruka portion vandu romba romba hot a irundhuchu and it became the sun okay now due to the condensation of atom and dust particle moving around the sun the formation of the entire solar system that is the planets took place so mercury venus earth mars jupiter uranus saturn and neptune okay the solid part of our planet earth was called lithosphere and the gaseous part is called atmosphere okay so this lithosphere the this is the land atmosphere is the gaseous part when the earth surface cooled down and its temperature decreased to 100 degree celsius the water was formed slowly slowly the earth's temperature started decreasing okay so there was water that is formed and there was an atmosphere that was formed and that is responsible for life ye when the life with in the or idiliyume kedaiyadu there is no life in any other planet because they do not ipo irukku ipo irukku kedacha information la irukla nama human arivu ke etna mari there is no any other proper supportive evidence that there is life on any other planet ama correct ah that is your big bang theory pasangla ipo theory of special creation so idu vandu kadavula nambranga it can be god in any form okay so the greatest supporter of this theory was father suras okay according to this bible life and everything was created by god in 6 days according to hindu mythology the world was created by god brahma nam ella nambro according to it life has not changed ever since its origin so starting la ellarume vandutanga manushanga ellarume plants trees paravenga ellame starting la vanduchindradha ivungaloda belief but this is absolutely false okay special creation lacks scientific evidence and it's not accepted okay now we have cosmozoic theory idu vanda yaar propose pannana it was proposed by richer and it was supported by arvinus protoplasm protoplasm na enna the watery content of the cell reach the earth in the form of spores edho or spores enga irundho vande nama earth la vande vilunduchi okay and these spores started developing into various life form and this is also not so true pasangala cosmozoic theory is true kedaiyadu okay next you have cosmic panspermia theory this theory was proposed by arvinus according to this theory organisms existed throughout the universe and their spores could freely travel through the space from one star to another so idala nambra mari iruka kandipa kedaiyad correct ah so this is called cosmic panspermia theory ipo nariya pere they started supporting theory of abiogenesis appo and kaalathla yosichirundinga adu correct ah da thonirukom correct ah so who proposed this uh, abiogenesis spontaneous generation life vandu thana varudunraanga okay so according to this theory life was originated from non living things spontaneously immediately life vandu originate aagum solranga so who supported this theory thales okay plato aristotle and the mari and the great scientists they also basically supported this abiogenesis a na enna non living bio na enna living so living things coming from non living things is called as a theory of spontaneous generation okay so abiogenesis was supported by von helmont okay so he claimed that formation of mites in 21 days in a in a if a sweat soaked dirty shirt is kept in a wheat okay romba simple or romba idha in the example alla vetrenga okay romba gallijara area means very dirty places there okay so in that dirty place you can see mice is coming out right so mice is coming out automatically so they believe that the mouse was coming from a non living thing like this so that is what we call it as theory of spontaneous generation 
so uh, in the slime land the oysters on the tree okay sand land the scallops on the tree okay hollows of rock land you had all this mollusca that is coming out so they started thinking in that way okay in the non living thing land da in the living thing varudhu adha da avanga spontaneous generation nu solranga illa abiogenesis nu solranga and we also had few scientists who disproved abiogenesis okay so it was francisco reddy Palenzani and Louis Pasteur. Rumbo mukhe mana vishyo. Who disproved abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is a disprove palangna. What they should prove? They should prove biogenesis. According to this theory, new organism can originate on earth only from pre-existing life. Pale life landa or pudu life varo. Okay. The theory rejected the theory. theory of spontaneous generation but it couldn't explain origin of life kandipa spontaneous generation nadakkudhu ana eppadi and the pre existing life seri pa or life varudhu adu pre existing life la nda varudhu ana and the pre existing life eppadi originate aachu indra explanation undu ivunga kuduka fail aitaanga okay to prove biogenesis and to disprove abiogenesis experiments were performed by francisco reddy spallanzani and louis pasteur okay so idhu romba mukkiyamaana example enna na louis pasteur example okay yes francisco reddy enna pannar pa he cooked meat in uh, three uh, jars or cooked meat eduthu or moonu jar la vachar okay jar a jar b jar c okay one was uncovered onna vandu cover e pannala second was covered with parchment paper or paper marina structure vachi adha vandu cover pannar moonadhu la டைட்டான ரொம்ப டைட்டான லிட் ஏர் டைட் லிட் போட்டு மூடி வச்சிட்டார் ஓகே he observed that maggots maggots na enna kutti kutti enna solradhu hatched eggs na vandu maggots nu solluvan so maggot inga enna irukku meat irukku correct ah so moonu thulume cooked meat irukku so idhula vandu maggots vanduchu kutti kutti poochi vanduchu idhiliyum onnu rendu vanduchu idhula suthama poochiye varala okay so what did he observe this proved that larvae were formed from the eggs laid by the flies in the open jar the jar which was kept open very easy the flies will come and eat it right will eat the meat their favorite food when they eat what they will do they will lay their eggs there and those eggs will hatch into maggots correct ah so there is nothing to do with the meat here it was something to do with the flies because here i didn't see any kind of uh, maggots coming out because i kept the lid tight romba simple so this disproved abiogenesis so they can ask you who disproved abiogenesis it was francis co reddy pasangla okay this proved that larvae were formed from eggs laid by the flies in the open jar since the meat in the closed jar couldn't be visited by the flies there was no larvae that could develop romba easy ana question okay now we shall continue this is what francis co reddy did okay inga paarenga idu flask that is completely sealed okay here the flask was covered with a gauze okay there were certain one or two flies there here the flies could easily enter and there you could actually see a lot of maggots there okay next spallanzani spallanzani enna pannaru he used pre soup prepare pannaru okay so he boiled vegetables and meat to prepare a sterilized nutritive soup and he kept uh, kept some of it in a air sealed flask and some of it in a loosely corked flask okay so you were know, in that is soup eduthar okay so in you soup irukku in you soup okay one la vandha enna enna pannare here it was very loose indha mari loose ah irundhuchu inga romba tight ah seal panna patta or flask okay he observed that the soup in the sealed flask remained sterile adha endha or contamination um illa but here in this flask okay there was a lot of contamination because he didn't seal it tightly okay thus even microorganisms were formed from pre existing ones in the air rather than spontaneously ena air la vandu microorganisms irukum this flask a was exposed to air okay so the microorganisms entered the soup and they could actually multiply and they contaminated romba romba easy ana vishayam yes or no pasangala isn't it easy Yeah, 
that is about your spallanzani experiment okay ipo nama next paaka poradhu the spallanzani oda experiment broth and nalla heat pannaru he left the flask open and he could see growth okay and he sealed the flask he waited there was no growth open pannone growth aachi appo na enna the life actually is existing okay the life is existing from a pre existing life okay it is not from the broth that there is life okay next you have lewis pasteur pasteur is pop, pop, uh, popular for his germ theory of diseases and he also disproved a biogenesis okay so he prepared sterilized syrup of sugar and yeast by boiling them in a flask sugar and yeast nalla boil panni or flask la vechittaru he took two flasks one of a broken neck and another of a curved neck adu vandu swan neck nu solrom okay so idu da and swan neck nradhu idu da okay so he boiled this what is this sugar and yeast okay it's a mixture of sugar and yeast okay when he boiled it even though he left it for some time there was no growth okay yena the microbes vandu inga irukke enter aavo adukapra enter aagadhu because the neck is of that shape purida pasangla but here i'm boiling it he broke the swan neck there was a growth so by this he disproved the theory of abiogenesis or the spontaneous generation romba romba easy ana vishayam okay now let's move on the most accepted theory oparin and haldane theory so in the theory ya nama enna nu solrom na the theory of chemical evolution nu solrom okay they formulated the modern hypothesis of origin of life okay we have heckel we have uh, oparin we have aldane we have stanley miller okay there are a lot of people who contributed to this chemical evolution pasangla so according to this theory life originated by the composition of chemicals romba romba mukyo okay oparin theory also known as primary see the chemicals indra the nadu they are non living correct ah romba mukhyamana vishayam Uh, it is first what will happen all the biomolecules that is needed for us will be produced biomolecules na na lipids proteins carbohydrates dna rna they all will be produced first and then the first life will come and then you will have the unicellular organism multicellular organism all that will come later so we call this as artificial synthetic theory the first life originated in the water of oceans so water is essential for the origin of life there is no life on the moon due to absence of water anga vandu thanni kedaiyadu okay adanal anga life kedaiyadu okay so first what they are telling it's very very important to understand that the chemicals were synthesized first only then the life was formed at the time of origin of life free oxygen was absent so first life was anaerobic okay modal life vandu anaerobic ena appa vandu you didn't have oxygen in the atmosphere okay in the primitive atmosphere free oxygen was present but complete oxygen consumed in the consumption in the composition so primitive atmosphere of earth was reducing and the first formed earth was reducing in nature okay so modern review, uh, view regarding the origin of life includes origin of earth and its primitive atmosphere that is chemical evolution and biological evolution so first you have chemicals that are required for a cell that will be synthesized then you will have the life that will be synthesized okay that's very very important so what are the four basic requirements for the origin of life modala enna theva enakku primitive atmosphere theva with little or no oxygen i need right chemicals and chemicals are very important energy theva time theva idu oru naal rendu naal oru varsham rendu varshathula nadakkira vishayam kedaiyadu it took millions and billions of years together to form this life on earth pasangla okay so idu da avangaloda chemical evolution oda entire understanding all of you stay with me first you have carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen correct is the naal mukhyamana elements which is present in all your biomolecule the first organic molecule was methane ch4 okay now what happened with further cooling ungala gas la vandu water vapor irukum the water vapor condensed and there were torrential rainfall or a term irukku okay evolution la torrential rainfall nu one irukku torrential rainfall na enna ma continuous rain pasangala oru naal rendu rendu naal illa aayira varshathukku continuous a mala peenjichu nu solli oru theory irukku and that is how your oceans and seas were formed 
okay so primitive oceans with molecules in it was formed now the oceans and seas are formed there is energy that came from the sun okay in the form of lightning uv rays cosmic rays all that happened and all these molecules were condensed they formed saturated hydrocarbon they formed unsaturated hydrocarbon unsaturated naina pasangla they had double bond okay now they form simple biomolecules like amino acids and sugars and finally they polymerize into a complex molecule and this molecular aggregates cluster to form cell like structures called protoworms idu onnu neenga inda flow chart vandha neenga clear ah padichitinga you can get five marks regarding chemical evolution romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam okay yes so the energy needed for the chemical evolution came from solar radiation it came from cosmic rays it came from electric discharges volcanic eruptions heat see we can't even predict what could have happened idella aayirkalam da nama solla mudiyum okay the lightest atom of nitrogen hydrogen oxygen were formed okay the primitive atmosphere was reducing this could be an important question because hydrogen atom combined with all available oxygen atom to form water and leaving no free oxygen oxygen free a irundilla okay evolution or up to formation of quaker veins okay now these protobionts later form aggregation called quaker veins okay aggregation na inda inda protobionts nariya seindu seindu quaker veins form agum okay and these quaker veins up to this we call it as chemical evolution adukapra nadandu nadandu vandu biological evolution okay so in which the complex organic compound were formed which were essential for the formation of cellular structure so this experiment is a compulsory five mark question stanley miller experiment okay stanley ure and miller experiment so what did they actually do they wanted to prove chemical evolution okay they recreated your primitive earth so nama earth vandu palaya kaalathula eppadi irukumo adha vandu recreate panna try pannanga in his experiment or apparatus okay so idhula enna nadakkudhu pasangala they used three important gases okay the gases are methane okay then you have ammonia and hydrogen all these three gases were taken in a gas dis discharge bulb okay they they subjected it to electricity by passing placing it under two electrodes appa electrodes place panumbod enna agum there will be a combination of these gases all these gases will combine okay and i am also providing a very high temperature ma'am in the high temperature eppadi kudukringa ma'am and heating the water so what will happen the water will get converted into water vapor and that water vapor will also now mix here that will give me the highest temperature that is required then the water is condensed here okay not water this gas gets condensed and they become what they become liquid right so when they become liquid they are collected here when they collected the sample when and when they observed they saw a lot of biomolecules nareya biomolecules and avanga paathanga okay so what are the biomolecules he observed he observed amino acids okay he observed hydrocarbons he observed small organic compounds idnala enna prove pannanga they proved that there has been chemical evolution chemical evolution kandipa 100% nadandirukindrada avanga vandu prove pannanga okay so what all ratio did they take they took methane ammonia and hydrogen in the proportion of 2 is to 1 is to 2 romba mukkiyamaana vishayam at 0 degree celsius this proportion of gases probably existed in the environment at the time of origin of life so that is what we call it as primitive earth they tried to recreate your primitive earth this flask was connected with a smaller flask that was filled with water with the help of a glass tube okay in the bigger flask two electrodes of tungsten were fitted just now we saw okay and the kalathla yaar ma'am electricity produce panirpa and the kalathla you had this lightning right this lightning was a source of electricity okay then a current of 60000 volts was passed through gases containing bigger flask for 7 days eel naal in the experiment vand avar nadathnaar at the end of 7 days when the vapors condensed a red substance was formed in the u tube 
okay when this red substance was analyzed it was found that it contains amino acids glycines nitrogenous base which are found in the nucleus of the cell so in the apparatus per enna solrona spark discharge experiment okay and the why this why this is called spark discharge experiment the energy used in the miller urey experiment was an electric spark or electric spark kudukro and that electric spark helps in condensation of gases okay or combination of gases idu da pasangala nadakkudhu romba romba mukkiyamaana experiment pasangala you can see an electric discharge stimulates a lightning uh, uh, it, it is basically ena um, solradhu it is analogous to the lightning which was there okay there is boiling water adds to water vapor to the artificial atmosphere we are creating an artificial atmosphere then i have a condenser which is going to cool down all my gases and i can see all the organic molecules getting condensed in the beaker okay it is a romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam then we have protobionts it already padichirukku right so macromolecules which were synthesized abiotically in primitive ocean came together okay and formed large colloidal droplet like structure called protobionts all your macromolecules lipids proteins nucleic acid they all formed a in uh, uh, you know, a aggregation in solala and this was later called as quaker waves okay quaker waves is very very important already pesi irke okay who proposed this oparin and fox call them as microsphere and dmr call them as vesicle or or thanga or or pair soli kooptaanga okay so oparin and halden they called it as quaker waves then i had signi fox he called it as microsphere okay then i had one more person who called it as vesicle each protobion was a cluster of macromolecules and the nucleic acid irundichi nitrogenous base irundichi amino acids irundichi adella adala irundichi okay these contain proteins nucleic acid lipid and polysaccharide okay so they grew by absorbing molecules from the environment enna na micro macromolecule protein nucleic acid lipids and polysaccharide okay yes this is how your protobion look like this is your quaker waves of oparin okay now these quaker waves could divide by budding like bacteria they had an ability to divide okay and many chemical reaction including the breakdown of glucose took place inside this protobion that's very interesting and idukala yaar energy kudukra sun the ultimate source okay right from then till today sun is the ultimate source of energy so according to oparin the quaker waves were the first sole living molecule which gave rise to cell okay evolution from quaker waves to simple cell structure is known as biological evolution in the quaker wave varikyo that is called as chemical evolution quaker wave to cell that is called as biological evolution pasangala romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam ipo namma evidence for evolution eppadi ma'am neenga ivlo strong ah solreenga idella nadandirukku nu because there is always an evidence every theory requires an evidence okay so there are different kinds of evidences for evolution we have paleontological evidence comparative anatomy and morphology physiology physiological and biochemical evidence biogeographical distribution and embryological evidence these are the five very very important evidences pasangala so nama one one na paathirala what is paleontology easy mcq question it is a study of fossils okay so you have birbal sani is a famous indian paleontologist okay so rendu vidamana paleontology irukku okay paleo botany is a study of plant fossils paleo zoology is a study of animal fossils so fossils na enna the remains of dead plants and animals are called as fossils so or animal or plant o setta adu mulusa decompose aaga adu adle edho or part remaining a irukko and the study of those fossils like your skeleton okay and different parts in in case of your plants it could be leaf fruit anything like that right so it is the impression of past organism found in rocks is called as fossils okay now let's try to understand so charles darwin was the one he is called the father of evolution was the one to show that fossils provide direct evidence for organic evolution because it deals with the actual organism which lived in the past romba direct ana or statement enak vandu eppadi theriyud and organism vaalnduchi illa ipdi da evolution nadandirukona ena indha or evidence irukku indha mari or organism indha edathla ipo indha time ku irunduchu nu solittu okay 
So the different methods of fossilization are intact preservation, petrification, molds and cast, impression, mummies, tracks, trails. This is out of syllabus. Just try to understand. How do you fossil prepare? Age of fossils is uh, determined by dating the rocks in which fossil occur. Rumbo, rumbo interesting. I can actually find out in which year that this particular living organism that was present as that is now present as a fossil was present. Was it 500 years ago? Was it 1000 years ago? We can do it by dating. Okay, carbon dating and so on. The method of determining the age of the rock of the fossil is called as carbon dating method. So what method we use? Carbon dating method. Okay. Now we shall continue. Carbon dating. This is the entire process. Okay. So this is not there in your syllabus. So in the carbon use pani, we try to trace your carbon and we try to find how old is that carbon. Okay. Fossil evidences. By studying fossils, following facts about organic evolution can be found. Fossils found in older rocks are of simple types and those found in newer rocks are of complex type. Apana enna pa, palaya kaalathila, umbo umbo old arka rocks ala, the organisms were very simple. Okay, if there, if there is a recent fossil that was found, the organisms were more complex. Okay, so what you see, the complexity is increasing. In the beginning, unicellular protozoans were formed from which the multicellular animals evolved. This is obvious. Some fossils represents connecting link between the two groups. Angiosperm among plants and mammals among your animals are the most developed organism. Angiosperm, the flowering plants and mammals, we too are the most developed organisms in the entire earth. Correct? So they gave us a lot of evidence. You can see this. What is this? This is an Archaeopteryx. It's a bird. Okay, so which was a connecting link between your reptiles and birds. It had both characteristics of reptiles and birds. Okay, though the fossils of horse, elephant and camel and others have been worked out, but the fossil record of horse is the best and complete. Okay, the fossil record of human is fragmentary. Now, you know, the clearer details. Okay, the evolution of horse has occurred almost in a straight line. That is what we call it as orthogenesis. I have this picture. First you have, this is your uh, first form horse, okay, you can see the changes in the kind of teeth, you can see the change in the height, okay, Iperka horse was 1.6 meter, but the first form horse was just 0.4 meter, 1.6 meter, so this all happened throughout the course of evolution, we have got all these fossils and we have studied those fossils, okay. Direct evidence, as I already told you, right? It basically gives that the modern day animals are evolved from the past animals, okay? The fossils of the upper strata of the sedimentary rocks are more advanced than the fossils of lower strata. Or a color and the male upper strata is the first layer, lower strata is the second layer, okay? The fossils of upper strata are closer to the present day animals, okay? And the study of fossils is called paleontology. They provide direct evidence for organic evolution. Pasangla, rombo rombo mukhya mana vishu. Okay, now let's talk about. Hello, hello, okay. Yeah. Anatomy and morphology. This is a homologous analogous. Okay. So different animals and plants. Anatomy na in a study of internal structure. Morphology na in a study of external features. Okay. So you see all birds are anatomically and morphologically similar. Similarly, all mammals are anatomically, anatomically and morphologically similar, okay. So, the similarities and dissimilarities is what could be an evidence for evolution, okay. So, these similarities provide one of the most concluding evidence of organic evolution. The similarities are of two types, homology and analogy, okay. So, let's try to understand this rumbo rumbo mukyo. What is homology? Homology, na, they have the same structure. Okay, they have the same origin, but their function is different. Okay, so same structure, origin, same in similar in 
similar structure origin okay but different function but different function adha da namma vandu homology nu sollom okay example four limbs of mammals okay unga horse agatum bat agatum whale agatum seal agatum man agatum they are all mammals they all have the same origin they all have the same structure but the horse uses its four limb for running the bat uses its for flying whale uses it for swimming seal uses it for swimming man uses it for holding okay we all have the same thing we have your humerus radius ulna okay metacarpals metacarpals phalanges ellame onne na okay but they differ in their function that's very very important and this homologous organ results in divergent evolution nareya vaati ketirukanga paanga what is divergent evolution similar organism becoming more and more dissimilar diverging ma enna going in opposite direction from a common point okay so this is one example four limbs of mammals okay then you have legs of invertebrates cockroach also has leg honey bee also has leg cockroach leg is used for walking honey bee leg is used for collecting your pollen okay they have the same structure then legs of invertebrates you can see how they have they have the same structure same origin but different function okay then you have the mouth parts of insect in cockroach the mouth part is used for biting and chewing idella extra information but it's always better to know this eda chonnu maranda you can write down okay honey bee chewing and lapping mosquito piercing and stucking yes then the mouth parts of insects they are all example for homologous organ another example is thorns of bougainvillea and tendril of cucurbita okay they are also very good example for homologous kekla thorns of bougainvillea and tendril of cucurbita are examples for both are a modification of stem okay they have the same structure same origin but different function thorns helps in defense okay tendril helps in support then wings of sparrow and pectoral fins of fish hind limbs of mammal potato and ginger radish and carrot pectoral fins of uh, fish and flipper of seal then flipper of penguin and dolphin okay idha ungala homologous this is your textbook picture thorns of bougainvillea and cucurbita ipo nama paaka porudhu analogy analogy na enna romba mukkiyo different structure and origin okay but similar function function vandu ore maari irukum that is what we call it as analogy organs which have different origin dissimilar fundamental structure but have similar function is what we call it as analogous organ inga paarenga wings of bird wings of bat wings of butterfly bird is an ape okay bat is a mammal butterfly is an insect what is they have different structure different origin but all the three helps in flight that is what we call it as analogy pasangala romba 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 mukkiyamaana vishayam okay let's try to understand the example you have your potato and sweet potato okay wings of bat and birds are analogous to wings of insect pelvic fins of fish and flipper of seal okay in the fish and the vera seal and the or mammal both will help in uh, uh, swimming okay then you have sting of bee and scorpion hands of man and trunk of elephant potato and sweet potato eyes of octopus and eyes of mammal they are different in the retinal position but they have the same function dog fish and whale okay so you can see human eye and octopus eye are example for analogous organ and remember pasangla this analogous organ leads to di- convergent evolution okay convergent evolution na in the dissimilar organism becoming more and more similar is called as convergent evolution very very important lastly let's also talk about vestigial organ the organs which are present in reduced form but they don't have any function no function adha da nama 
vestigial organ nu solrom okay these are the remnants of organ which were complete and their functional in their ancestors nama human body la 180 vestigial organs irukke the most common one you guys know appendix irukke body hair goose bumps okay coccyx male nipples tonsils ear muscles okay wisdom teeth appo and namak wisdom teeth theva pattuchi ena appo man used to eat everything raw he used to tear the flesh and eat but now do we do that no we cook and eat right so wisdom teeth is vestigial ipo and adu function e kedaiyadu okay so these are called vestigial organs pasangala romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam okay nictitating membrane muscles of pinna inga nam pinna la or muscle irukku vermiform appendix coccyx canine teeth third molar teeth segmental muscles of abdomen cecum because earlier earlier man he used to eat all this uh, uh, raw leaf okay uh, everything used to eat raw apo and cecum use aachu ipo cecum use aagala body hairs okay why early man he used to not wear any clothes so he needed body hair okay then nipples in male and ear pinna these are some example of vestigial organs pasangala okay so let's talk about connecting links in the coming class okay so connecting links na enna very simple there are some animals and plants they possess the characters of two separate groups so this is archaeopteryx okay it was a connecting link between reptiles and birds these species act as a bridge between two taxonomic group such organisms are called connecting links okay we have some examples for connecting link not so important virus connects living and non living euglena connects plants and animals okay indha mari nariya examples irukku romba mukkiyamaana vishayam kedaiyad okay so this ends today's class okay so in the class la nama enna la paathirukom pasangala we discussed about evolution okay we discussed about origin of life okay different theories theories of origin of life theories of origin of life okay and we also discussed about uh, ena solrudu uh, francis co redis experiment louis pasteur experiment abiogenesis how did they disprove in the different theories i'll did okay okay then you have biogenesis biogenesis then you have chemical evolution okay chemical evolution and we have the most important miller experiment okay miller experiment romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam adukapram we try to understand the evidence for evolution evidence for evolution la romba mukkiyamaana adu analogy and homology okay you need to know that adu kandipa miss e panna koodadhu homologous organ and analogous organ so we can expect a five mark question from here we can expect it from here and we can also expect it from here and here and you can you should also know the experiments which were used to disprove the theory of abiogenesis idella padicha poduma ma'am absolutely podum pasangala idu mudichittu nama vandu darwinism paaka porom we are also going to discuss about lemark's theory theory of natural selection hardy weinberg equilibrium and human evolution you know all these topics are which we will cover in the next session Thank you so much for learning with me. Do stay tuned for more bio learning. Thanks a lot.